Well, back in high school, uh, we didn't have any warm-ups. It was a school, East Side, Cleveland East Side. They used to wear T-shirts, and they all had their nicknames on the back. So we was like, we'll get us T-shirts, and we'll do the same thing. So I didn't have a nickname. At that time, Jerry Rice was going to Valley. Everybody called him World Rice. And I remember one of my cousins, he was like, what about world class? Like that. I, was, I said, what? world class, let's do it. So that's how it started. Like we put world class on my shirt, and it took off from there. I'm from Baptist Town, and I'm proud to say that uh, my first home was 309 and a half McNeil Street. So I attended Threadgill, Stone Street, uh, and also Davis Elementary Schools. And uh, man, those were good experiences for me. And then, uh, like I said, I ended up at East, and, and then from there I went on to LZ. My family, they started a gospel group my mom did when she was younger. And they found out that I was musically inclined at the age of six. So I started playing the drums for the gospel group at the age of six. And then from there, I went on and started playing the bass. We did some programs out of state, and uh, I just enjoyed that, that time of my life. Fifth grade at East Elementary, we had a team. And uh, that's when I started playing organized basketball. My favorite player of all time, Dr. J. Once I saw him play, it just, it just took over my body. He's just always been uh, great on the basketball court. I mean, he loved it with a passion. Uh, he had a lot of confidence in himself. He felt that if anybody else could do it, he could do it too. And everywhere that we could drive and come back home and go to work the next day, we were right there. It was, it was exciting. Uh, he would always say, when I go pro, and never say it if I. He always said, when I go pro. My freshman year, we were the best college team in Mississippi. We beat Mississippi State in Starkville that year. I think our tallest guy was 6'6", and uh, they had guys like 6'11". We were so good, we played well together, and Coach Murphy had us in tune. I think that's what got him the job at Ole Miss. Playing in the SEC was a dream, man. I grew up watching it. guys in the SEC, Barkley, Dominique Wilkins. I saw all these guys play in the SEC every Saturday. And that's, that's, that's what I wanted to do. When I got that opportunity to play in the SEC, I got that chip back on my shoulder that I had, you know, from being overlooked. And that's what drove me. I never will forget the game when uh, they played LSU. Conference. We call them the top guns. They're two of the top four scorers in the country. For Ole Miss, of course, it's Gerald Glass, second in the SEC, fourth in the country. And of course, for the Tigers, Chris Jackson, number two in the nation, and the top scorer in the Southeastern Conference. Uh, it's such a shame that Glass came into the conference the same year CJ did because he really hasn't gotten the publicity that he deserves. He leads the team in three-point shooting, in scoring, in rebounding, and then with CJ, well, if he scores 15 points tonight, he'll become the all-time leading scorer among freshmen in college basketball, and, you know, CJ might... During shoot-around, one of my teammates, he was like, uh, he said, why don't you try to score every time you touch the ball? And I said, well, I don't, you know, I said, I just play within the floor of the offense, and I just, you know, I get mine like that. So once, once the game started, I was so relaxed and uh, it was just one of those nights, man, where I didn't, I didn't hear the crowd, and it felt like I was playing in the gym alone. Two-pointer here, Jackson looks inside. Ill-advised pass there, Glass came away with it. Rams at home, back to Midland. Inside, Turner kicks it out to Glass. Three-pointer. Well, yeah, I thought he was tired, but he really showed me something more. He's over 50. What a show! Line for two shots. Yeah, when you score that many, it's, it's, it's tough to keep count sometimes. <laughs> so Jackson has tied his record, but now it's all down to glass. <laughs> Ole Miss leads. 113, 112, nine seconds to go. I just want to watch what happens after the free throw.
The door is open for LSU. Jackson with the ball. Let's it go. After that LSU game, that's when the noise started. Uh, people started talking about the upcoming draft and possible draft picks and, you know, this and that, because I was a junior at the time. Scouts started looking at him and, you know, trying to get him to come out early. And, of course, his mom encouraged him. She wanted him to go back because she wanted him to get an education. And so he went back for his last year. And, living in a double-wide mobile home uh, out on uh, Maloof Road. And I remember clear as day, we were sitting there waiting for his name to be called at the draft. And when they called his name, man, it was some noise out on Maloof Road. And you're talking about exciting. We were excited. We got to go to Minnesota and watch him play. We got to go to Atlanta and watch him play. The, uh, I have a whole lot of places, you know, to watch him play. Some of the most exciting times of my life were spent watching him play ball. And I played uh, one season with the Pistons. Man, I, I played with some legends. Uh, Mark Aguirre was on that team, Orlando Woolrich, uh, Alvin Robinson, the bad boys, uh, Isaiah, Joe Dumars, Dennis Rodman, Bill Lane Beer was on that team. And uh, it was really fun playing with those guys. Some of the toughest guys I had to guard, believe it or not, man, Jeff Hornacek. Jeff Hornacek was one of the toughest guys because he could shoot the, the, the long shot, he could drive and penetrate. Mid-range, he had it. Danny Ainge was also tough. You don't want, ever want to guard a guy that's just constantly moving around the court. Those guys never stop moving. I knew Isaiah was gonna try to do something flashy for the crowd, so, but I was expecting a, a lob, just a normal lob. But when I saw him bounce the ball, I was like, what is he doing? And so I had to adjust. But luckily, like I said, I didn't flush it uh, all the way clean, but I made the basket. My high school coach was retired. And I called down to the uh, superintendent's office to see if they had a coach. <clears throat> and they didn't, they hadn't hired a coach yet. And so she called me back within the next 30 minutes and told me, that they wanted me to come down and be their coach. So that was my first opportunity to coach and I was, I'm so thankful to Miss Jean Hall for, for hiring me. She gave me a chance and, and I'm, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. When Gerald became the coach at Amanda Elsie High School, that was a proud moment for him as well as a proud moment for all of us, you know, being able to go back to the school where you had played and then be, you know, be the head coach. I think it was his coaching ability and his knowledge of the game as what really made things click. I was happy that I could come back and contribute to us winning the championship because, man, it, 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 we have so much talent to go through the school. It's just, just, just ridiculous that we hadn't won a state championship because we had so many good basketball players. My, my old coach, he, was, he, he got a chance to sit on the bench with us during the championship game, and I just wanted him, you know, to be a part of it. And it, it was fun seeing the the joy in his face seeing the championship come back home. And uh, those were some good times. Those were a good two years for this town. I think it brought the town together. And uh, you know, that those were some good moments. One of the first guys <clears throat> who took me, pulled me to the side to give me an insight on what I was about to face was a guy named Bill Maloof. Bill knew I was an up-and-coming athlete, and he had traveled that road before me. And he was the first guy that taught me how to train. He took me out there behind St. Francis to that little small court, and he taught me how to train, jump rope, and taught me the different things I needed to do to get in shape. Once I got to college, uh, one of the assistant coaches, Maurice Harrell, took me on his wing. He was like a big brother to me. And uh, he coached me at Delta State and also at Ole Miss. So. We spent a lot of time together, did a little traveling together in the summer. He was like a big brother to me. And I'm, I'm, I'm approachable. And, uh, you know, I got some good advice for the young kids who are trying to travel down the road that I've, I've traveled. So 
and I'm willing to help and to try to improve this town and community. I am uh, most proud of Gerald in being the person that he is. I'm more proud of the way that he handles himself as an individual. So I'm just really proud of him and his character, how he has kept himself together, kept his head on straight. That means more to me than any basketball game that he's ever played.